Ho, ho, ho. Give me your best ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> that was your best? <laughs> yes, this is why I will never be Santa Claus. It's okay. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. We'll see how that sounds. <laughs> All right, well, welcome to the Biblically Centered Podcast, where today we are having a little festivities. Yes. Christmas is just right around the corner. Oh, man. Less than a week away. It is. And so we are going to just have a fun, lighthearted episode. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, For those who do listen to this podcast uh, more regularly, obviously... The podcast typically goes through 26 virtues that we've established in um, our biblically centered curriculum. Mm -hmm. Um, But today's episode is going to be very lighthearted. We're just talking about Christmas. Yes. And of course, you know, the room is decorated a little bit more festive for this episode. So those who are listening instead of watching, sorry, (laughs) you're missing out on some of the some of the experience. Um, The aesthetics. Aesthetics. All right, but to introduce ourselves, my name is Johnny Jordan. This is my wife, Danica. Hello. So, Danica, do you want to give a brief history of yourself real quick? Um, no. All right, well, we're going to move on <laughs> in the spirit of Christmas. So we thought it'd be fun just for this episode, just to be, a, again, just a lighthearted, hopefully fun, funny, maybe, episode. We are going to do our, we are going to do a Christmas countdown. Okay. Okay. Of our top five Favorite things about Christmas. Yes. And we did not consult with each other, but when we put our list together. No, we um, didn't. I can always already assure you, Johnny will have a better list. I don't think mine will. My list won't be better. Um, I, I did mine a lot quicker than yours, so there's a chance that yours has more thought in it than mine. But again, we did not consult with each other beforehand. Correct. So my assumption, though, is there will be some things that will... Like, I'll have things on my list that are on your list. You'll have things on your list that are on my list. So, like, if I say my number five and that's Danica's number three, we won't talk about it twice. We'll just mark it off your list. Okay. So, who knows how long this will take. But We'll be, see. I tried picking fun. unique things, I think. I tried picking honest things. Mine, mine are also honest, <laughs> but I also was like, hmm, I feel like this would be on his list. What's something else I can do? Yeah, mine are pretty basic. And I would assume um, that the people listening probably have a lot of these things on their list, too. Probably. But I do have some opinions about these topics. <laughs> As always. Number five. Okay. So I'll let you go first with yours. What is your number five? Okay. My number five is something we have recently started doing. Um, recently, um, with... My siblings last year and Johnny's siblings this year, instead of giving physical gifts, we have been just going out to eat and spending time and having fun together. And I really enjoyed last year doing that with my siblings. We all live in different cities um, and states. There are four of us. We live in three different states and three different cities. My sisters live in the same town, but... Um, it was just a really nice way for us to actually be able to like all chat and talk together and enjoy quality time. And so this year we're doing that with, um, most of Johnny's siblings. Um, and so that should be a fun time. Yeah. It's just, we're all old enough. We can buy what we need to buy. Mm -hmm. And it just seemed like, oh, yay, thanks. Yeah. Gifts are kind of a, a interesting thing, especially being in adulthood just because, I think the best way to say it is if some, if I'm going to get a gift for someone or someone's going to get a gift for me, I don't necessarily want it to be, um, like they felt like they had to do it. Right. Right. So like, I know that there's pressure at Christmas and of course we want to have a great Christmas for our kids. And of course, you know, maybe get some gifts for each other or whatever that are meaningful, but for like siblings and people beyond, I don't want there to be this unnecessary pressure that like, well, I got to get something for my brother and I don't know what he wants. And like, so you're going to end up spending, you know, at least 20 bucks for a gift that they want. You don't even know if they're going to really care for the time and effort of driving yourself crazy of trying to buy like, anyways, it was just very helpful last year to be like, all I did was make a reservation. Yeah. So we, yeah. And it was a lot of fun last year. Yeah. Um, We went out to dinner, went and played some pickleball at an indoor pickleball court and hung out and, 
Um, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna try that this year with my siblings who are in town for yeah, um, for Christmas. And so uh, yeah, that'll be fun. And I think that'll be hopefully if it you know goes well this year. Hopefully it'll be a tradition that we can yeah. keep on with moving forward. So that's a really good number five for you. I didn't. There you go. Yeah. I know coming out strong with number five. All right, what's yours? So if you are listening and you are in that place where you're like, man, I really love Christmas, but sometimes the the trying to figure out gifts for everyone. That is very true. Is um, maybe stressful and you don't feel like necessarily worth your while and all that stuff. Pitch pitch a different idea. Something that maybe maybe more of an experience versus a... Yeah, and we chose like a place to eat that we don't go to normally. So it kind of made it like fancy and di- different. You know, so you already know you're going to spend money on your meal. Mm-hmm. And you kind of feel like you get to treat yourself depending yeah. on where it is. So yeah, propose that idea. I hope that your family will love it. Well, my number five is a little bit more basic. I just said Christmas movies. I mean, that's a that's a giant. That's it's a, a giant great category. One. Yes. Um, just because I just you know there's just something special about Christmas movies, and we always try to make a point with us and with our kids um, to watch you know a handful of the ones that we that oh, yeah. we really like. Um, so you know I think it's a tradition that kids really look forward to and they have specific opinions on and the ones that they are starting to like and think are funny and are able to quote and yeah. that sort of thing um, so yeah so Christmas movies is great we watched uh, a Christmas story for the first time this year um, I know that I mean I'm sure you know this too everyone has their opinions on like what's their top three Christmas movies correct and there I feel like there's the people who are in the Christmas story camp who grew up with it Right. Love it. Think it's the best thing ever. And we watched it, just Annika and I, for the first time a week or two ago. I had seen it long ago. Oh, okay. But had f- completely forgotten. I'd never seen it. I, I knew, knew the a, highlights. I knew that a kid got his tongue stuck to a pole. <laughs> um, I knew that someone talks to him about getting his eyes shot out, and that's really all I knew, and that he gets kicked down a slide by Santa. The leg lamp is... And I had seen the leg lamp, but I didn't really right. know the context of what that right. was to the story. <laughs> so seeing it for the first time, um, I enjoyed it. You know, I think it, yeah. it would be one of those things that I would have have to have grown up with yeah. to appreciate it more. Um, so, but what, just off the top of your head, what, do, what if you could boil it down, what are your top two favorite Christmas movies? Oh my goodness, top two? Uh-huh. Um, honestly, I mean, Santa Claus is just classic. Mm -hmm. Tim Tim Allen, Allen. just classic. Yep. Um, and also I didn't watch it a ton growing up, but we watch it every year is, um, Christmas Vacation, Mm -hmm. which is just laugh out loud the whole time. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) So Christmas Vacation, I feel like is more, is like what some people view a Christmas story as. Right. Is what I view Christmas Vacation as. Yeah. Because it's just it's just funny. I usually see it a couple times a season, just because it's on TV or whatever, yes. and it's just got some funny moments. Uh, Santa Claus is in my top two. Yeah, I do love that one. Um, I I still have memories of seeing that in the theaters when it right. came out, um, which is great. But my but um, it's a wonderful life. No, I know that one's like yes, uh, that's a more somber yeah. one about the season. Yeah, it's not it's not yes. the holly jolly right story which, this year. We watched for the first time. They had like a colorized version, mm-hmm. which made it. Yeah, on Amazon Prime, we were we were going to watch it, <laughs> and there were two versions of it. I was like, "Why are there two versions?" And like uh, the descriptions, which Amazon, if you're listening to this, do a better job with your descriptions <laughs> because the descriptions told us nothing about what the difference was between the two. Right. No. So we clicked on one, and it was in color. Yeah. And I guess there's a studio out there. I forget the name of them that go back, and now they're restoring a lot of old movies yeah. into color. And I mean, and it looks legit. It like does. it looks like it was filmed in color. Yeah. Um, and really, really cool. And it kind of just added a extra it did. dimension to the story. But that's always a great one. I mean, of course, it's heavy <laughs> for 85% of the movie. <laughs> yes. And then the end, you, you cry. And I did cry yeah. this time just because, you know, it's just a good movie that I think just continues to help you put things into perspective. And I know it, it's considered a Christmas movie, but, you know, it's not really a Christmas story until the end. Right. Um, and it, and it got nominated for a few Academy Awards and won one for something. I forget, Sweet. like a technical achievement or something yeah. like that. But you know. I just think it's great that because it gets dark so early. <laughs> so you just want to be cozy and where we are isn't. I was talking about the movie gets dark so early. Oh, no. 
I was like, wow, yeah, it does. I mean, it does. Kid gets hit in the ear. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just mean like this time of year in the evenings, it gets dark at night. Mm. And where we live now, I mean, it, it's cold. It's not like freezing compared to people up yeah. north. But we hit, like, it's nice to just to be range. cozy and all you want to do is watch movies. And yeah. there's so many options around this time of year. Yeah. And then the kids, we've found a lot that they enjoy too. Mm -hmm. So, lots, of, lots of good ones, and so I enjoy it. And I'm always kind of sad whenever. To me, the saddest day of the entire year is December 26th, which in Canada is Boxing Day. They have a holiday on that day. Yeah, that I don't know what that means. Me. I know. Um, but you know, because it's like we'll still have family here, you know, and like we'll still be doing Christmas things. So I just feel like it's different when it's already after Christmas. Like going to look at Christmas lights is after. different. Yeah, after Christmas true. and watching Christmas movies is just different we'll still enjoy it but I like to me my favorite part about the Christmas season is kind of like the the build up to the day right so all right you ready to move on yes Number four. okay so you actually just said it um Christmas lights that's my number three. Oh, okay. Um, they're on my list because we did it all growing up mm -hmm. and we still do it like with our kids. We load them up and there's actually this like awesome house this way, um, north of us. Um, Good job. <laughs> Danica normally is like, <laughs> well, anyway. like, well, there's like a grocery store that we live next door to, uh, well, next to our neighborhood over there. And now I'm like, I'm going to go to Dylan Sherlock Point. And I'm like this. Where do you think we are? I'm like, it's this way. Anyway, good am, job with your directions. I am excellent with maps. You are, actually. I always just view myself as facing north. So then I point to the direction. Anyways, it's whatever. selfish. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, there's this awesome Christmas house that we found. And it's literally in the neighborhood across from us. And they sync their lights up so cool. And um, yeah, one of those houses where they just they go all them. out. Yeah. Like every square inch of the yard is covered. And yes. then you, you know, pull up and tune your radio to their radio oh, station. Yeah. And then it's so fun. And the kids love it. Yes. Um, and they raise money. And, and it's a little different every year. It's not like they, yes. they don't do the same thing every year. So, but one of my most favorite memories growing up, because we used to always do it, we would load up with our hot chocolate or after we made cookies or something. Um, but one year, randomly, <laughs> this will just give you an insight to my family. Um, my dad had purchased an airport shuttle bus. When like you say purchase, like he bought it? Yes. It wasn't like a rental? No. He bought this bus. He bought this bus. Shout out to Danica's dad. Because found a great deal. <laughs> one of my favorite or most unique things about being in her family now is just seeing all of the... Like her dad is crazy when it comes to finding deals on anything. Like he just, he's just real, one, really good at finding deals. Right. But two, finding deals on really like, I wouldn't say unusual. Well, maybe unusual is the right word. Just unique vehicles. I mean, how many cars when we started dating did I have in my driveway and there were only. Yeah. When I first showed up to your house, there was like and my parents eight drove. cars in the driveway. <laughs> and I was like, are they having a party? I was like, I didn't know there was going to be a party. And I walk in, it's just her family. Yeah, we always had around 8 to 12 cars. But your dad would buy a lot of cars that needed work right. to yes. fix them up. Um, but like right now, he has a TV truck in y'all's driveway, which yeah. is huge. It's like an old school, like new station TV truck Yeah. that he, what did he say? He traded, he paid $300 in a generator <laughs> and traded for this <laughs> giant TV truck. I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah. but they want to like take it camping. Yeah. It's got like a bed and stuff uh -huh. anyways okay so one year he had an airport shuttle bus okay and so um he took our family he took um i was homeschooled so we had a family who had like eight kids we took them and then i think at least one or two other families and we were all able to fit in this airport shuttle bus was this when you i was probably like 12 or something okay, so this is when y'all lived in yeah yeah in our old um and I just remember like someone had brought like hot chocolate and thermoses that we were handing out. And it was just like, you're just on this bus looking at Christmas lights. And it was so much fun. So that would be really, really cool. Why did he get rid of that? I feel like that'd be, there'd be so much functionality to that. I, thing. I think he was able to sell it for a great price. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyways, shout out. If anyone has an airport shuttle vehicle, they like the van. Like that's what I'm talking like. Yeah. Anyways, it was, it was fun. So I uh so like I said, Christmas lights is my number three. Right. Um, 
And this is one of the topics I do have opinions on. Yes. Which you know. I voice them to you. Um, there are certain things I love about Christmas lights. And the things... Because to me, Christmas lights, they're an essence of kind of like that Christmas magic. Yes. Like, to me, part of the magic of Christmas lights is the effort that was put forward to accomplish the lights on the house. And I'm not saying I'm like against people hiring professionals because obviously that still is someone up on the roof putting lights on. Right. So it still is effort. But like a lot of people just get the little like, and I think the trend, I really feel like the trend has started to wane a little bit because yes, I yes. haven't seen nearly as many of them in the past couple of years as I did maybe five years ago where people would go to Lowe's and just buy like the projector lights and yeah. put them in their yard that just like project lasers or different <laughs> yeah. color lights onto the house and they would just call it good. I think that was a big, like, um, what's that one, like, TV show where they just sell stuff all day long? Like, I think that was on. Oh, uh, was that, it on there? Yeah. Yeah. It was like a, what are those things called? You know, you they, walk they in the store and they have the whole, like, like on, TV. Seen, seen yes, on TV. Yes, I see on TV. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, although, I do have a family member. One time we went to their house years ago. I don't know if you remember this. And they had those green laser lights, but in their yard pointing up to the trees. Oh, yeah. And so... It was crazy because you couldn't see the lights, but when you look up in the trees, you would just see all these green, all these green lights just up in the branches, and that was kind of cool because it made the trees feel like they were alive a little bit at Ooh, night. Okay, but but yeah, the people who just say I'm gonna go put Christmas lights on and just go outside for ten <laughs> minutes and stake something in the yard and just project like a blue ocean scene onto their house and say <laughs> it's that's not Christmas spirit. Sorry. Also, um, I don't like inflatables in people's yards no and what was it we drove by a house the other day just during the day and i told johnny i was like it just looks like there's just a bunch of like yeah. carcasses in their front exactly. yard it's like <laughs> you power them down except in, in the night so when people drive by your house especially the people who have like multiple of these right. in their yard oh, yeah. and there's just like these little sacks of dead santa clauses <laughs> in their in their yard for the whole day i'm like that does not bring christmas spirit no nine times out of ten even when they're inflated they look dumb um, True. so ditch the, whatever, whoever got us on the assist inflatable, they're hard to stake down. If it went, if you got to stake them down Correct. with like magna, magna stakes, because if you're in a windy city, like we are, yeah. I mean, those things blow. Oh yeah. So it's too much work for the, for what the reward is. Yeah. And, um, and they just don't look good. Well, and another trend that we've seen, because in our area, I don't know about y'all, they go all out for Halloween, which gets a little... I don't love it. We avoid certain parts of town. Um, but there's one house that still has their skeleton up over their fence and they just put Christmas lights on. Yeah, those dumb. Anyways. These trends are insane. But yeah, there's a there's a yard and it's a really nice still, house. Yeah, And so they just put Christmas lights in his hands as if he's like putting them on their fence. Yeah. And I'm just like that. It's dumb. Yeah. Let's not. Let's not do that. So stick, stick with this. The season. So yes, Christmas lights are great. We love them. I do Christmas lights every year at our house. Yes. It is a little bit of a process because I do them on the roof. Wrap the poles in the front, put them on the bushes. Um, I hang icicle lights from the. But last year you saved yourself time. You like labeled everything and like packaged I did. it all. Because normally when, like I said, when Christmas season's over, like I'll still, I'll leave the lights on for a week or two after Christmas. Right. But then when it's, you know, time to take them down, I just kind of just try to get it over with. Right. But last year I was like, I'm going to take a little bit extra time. I rolled everything up individually. I wrapped it, labeled everything. Like with the roof lights, I labeled the order, which that was extremely helpful this year. Yes. The order in which the strands go so that, because last year it worked out perfectly to where like the strands were literally ending at like, <laughs> it was a miracle last year because I would, I didn't plan it, <laughs> but all the strands were like ending at like corners and like yeah. at perfect spots where you could attach another strand. And so that, yeah, so I labeled them. So it worked out again this year. So. Well, that's awesome. <clears throat> okay. So my number four. Yes. I'm assuming this is on your list. Christmas music. It's actually not. That's not on your list. I mean, I love it. That's what I was trying to say. I was trying to pick like kind of unique things. Gotcha. So, um, okay. but I do love Christmas, Christmas music. music. Everyone has their opinion on it, whether you yes. can play it all year, just a Christmas season, during Halloween, whatever. I do have some rules. Mm -hmm. um, typically, I don't start until mid-November. I'm not like a purist where it has to be after Thanksgiving, but... You know, you kind of slowly start weaning into it. I think our daughter asked for it in October this year, though. So I think we played it a few times in October. Mm, did we? I don't know if we did. Maybe I did. Yeah, I don't know if I would have approved of that. I'm a little... It yeah. hits October and it starts getting dark. And it's just like, yeah, yeah. I want to play it. But some people hate it. I love it. I think there's lots of different... Um, 
elements to Christmas music, and I love all the most of the different because you know there's some Christmas songs that are just very just you know surface level about Frosty the Snowman or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then you know obviously you can go down the deep theological Christmas songs, and there are so many really really good Christmas songs. I love singing them at church. Yeah. Um, you know, like I am on the worship team at our church, and so yesterday I started practicing for our Christmas Eve services. And just some of the song choices that are in there, you know, they just, they just, they've been incorporating yeah. them well at church this season. Mm-hmm. Like I like, it'll be like kind a of a mashup of, then, yeah, yeah. we'll it's kind of go into really the bridge nice. of a Christmas song or a verse of a Christmas song and then back into, um, cause they have such deep, rich meaning. Mm-hmm. Anyways, how she's been pairing them has been like, yeah, really impactful. And I think we talked about Christmas music on our last podcast. I think so. But Shout out to my Christmas list again. Johnny Jet playing on Spotify. I got two of them. Uh, Flat White Christmas, which yes. is over three hours of Christmas music that I carefully selected. Yes. Uh, and then Christmas Morning, which is a shorter list, a little bit more of the classical Christmas music just Correct. to play in the background on Christmas morning. So if you need something that's a little bit more unique, that's not just a Spotify generated playlist. Correct. Um, what would you say would be like the song or songs that just remind you of growing up Christmas or do you remind have growing like up? well being Crosby just his all of his Christmas music just reminds me of Christmas morning Yeah, that's very true just like I said in the last episode just because we would always have like that kind of stuff playing in the in the house on Christmas morning so it just kind of reminds me of that yeah but my favorite um I think Oko O Come O Come Emmanuel might be my favorite oh, nice. like Jesus centered Christmas song yeah I love that one. And there's so many different renditions of it yeah. from August Burns Red's metal version of it, which <laughs> still, I mean, it's, it really is a masterpiece. And my friend Curtis, did I talk about this on the last episode? I don't think so. Shout out to Curtis again. I think I did talk about it. We had, oh, we had a couple f- friends who aren't necessarily like, don't like metal music who, um, there's an instrumental Christmas album by August Burns Red called Sledding Hill or Sledden Hill. Um, that's great. But anyways, the O Come O Come Emmanuel, and there's an instrumental version, but it's good. I mean, I've teared up listening to these songs before, and they're metal instrumental versions, but there's just something about it. Yeah. Know? Yeah. I was finally able to find the Christmas album that I grew up with on YouTube like a few years ago. So like two, three years ago, I was just having to play YouTube and then like click next. and But it finally came out on Spotify last year. But it's like an old school mm-hmm. BB CC Winans, Stephen Curtis Chapman. Yeah. It just, and a couple of them that the just, playlist. when I hear those songs, I just, I can picture exactly. Yeah. Like Christmas, my family. Yeah. So, I love Christmas. Anything else on Christmas music? I don't think so. Okay. I think it's just great. And yeah, we literally have it on, I think, 24 yeah. 7 right now. And our daughter, she'll like literally wake up in the morning and we'll yes. just go over and turn it on just so it's, and it just it plays in the house. And then, Sometimes I get, you know, kind of tired of the, you know, the music like digital side. So then like all yesterday I just put on Bing Crosby's, uh, I forget the name of it, but it's the one where he's wearing a Santa hat on the album, on my record player yeah, and just kept for, I mean, hours just would let it play and then flip it, let it play, flip (laughs) it, let it play, flip it, let it play. And just did that all during dinner and stuff. So yes. All right. Okay. Okay, this is kind of a super random one, but um, my family, we still just crack up laughing about it. So um, so my dad's mom used to live in our same town growing up, which was awesome. She was able to like babysit us and hang out. She was over all the time. But for Christmas, obviously, she would come to our house. But there was one year in particular where I think maybe my brother had woken up kind of early, like in the 5 to 5.30 range. like On Christmas morning? Very early, yes. Which normally it was like six o'clock. You know, mom and dad would let us wake up early and we could see like our stockings and our big Santa gift that was unopened. They would let y'all do that before they woke up? Yeah. What in the... W- no. Then they got to sleep in some, yeah. No. So, yes. <laughs> Not allowed in our house. <laughs> so, but one time I remember my brother going out there and he had looked out the window and there was somebody out there. So he went and got my dad and my granny had showed up at like 5 a.m. <laughs> It was just like waiting, like scouting the house to see if we were awake yet so she could come in. Um, So she was just standing in the yard? Yes! (laughs) (laughs) But she would just, I mean, it was just fun 
having that anticipation from like your grandma or my granny yeah um with you as a kid so like she wanted to be there to like see us when we first woke yeah. up and stuff and so yeah i just remember my brother being like uh dad i think there's someone out there in our yard <laughs> and it was like a ghost you just like out the window and you're like what <laughs> She did that a few times though. So, anyways, she would always come over and join us. But I got, there is something special about the grandparents' involvement with Christmas for me as well. Like that, because yeah. we would always spend Christmas at my grandparents' house um, growing up. And you know, there's just it's just a very unique yeah time. And you know, they were, I mean, their grandparents, so they're just there for the fun. You know, yeah, um, not the stress of it all. That's what the parents are for. <laughs> Correct. Um, <laughs> You know, so they were always just having such a good time laughing and, you know. So, yeah, that's kind of my so your favorite. Throw in. So your number three is grannies in the yard. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I just. It, we'll we, try to schedule that for this year. Well, she I mean, I know you met her just a handful of times, yeah. but she passed away earlier early on uh, when we were dating. And Very so early on when we were dating. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So but her memory every year we crack up about that and keep her in our memory. Yeah. She would be fun. She would. Anyways. Well, we already hit my number three, so I think that means we got to pound on number two. Oh, my. Okay. No. Okay, here's my second. Are you ready? Uh-huh. Snacks are acceptable meals. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Because I've already made sausage balls this year. I'll probably make them again. Um, growing up, summer sausage and like Ritz and cheese. No, I mean, we that was done that yet this year. I know. I was looking at uh, um, summer sausage yesterday, and I didn't get any. But um, I mean, that would be lunch. That mm-hmm. would be a dinner. That would be like it was just acceptable to finger just food kind of, lunches and yeah. Yes, or like little pigs in a blanket, uh-huh. or it's just like those are acceptable foods yeah. around this time of the year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know mine, the one that we would always do a lot. I uh, searched my grandparents is that sausage dip, the oh, cream yeah. cheese sausage dip. Oh, yeah. So they're like sausage, rotel, and cream cheese, <laughs> and you eat it with tortilla chips. <laughs> but I would be like meals for yeah. several days. Oh, yeah. So we'll be doing that this year. Oh, yeah. But yeah, I love that's a really good one. And like even for our like our life group this past, we did kind of like our Christmas life group this past um, week. And so we just did finger, finger foods. foods yeah. For, so everyone, you know, there's some good stuff. Yeah. It's a little different because with the kids in summer, I do like – snack lunches i guess but that's more like veggies crack like it's different you know you around the crack? crackers no you didn't finish the oh, did I not? you just said I'm veggies sorry. and crack <laughs> <laughs> my bad um it's a little different i try to make those a little healthier for the kids in the summer but um in the winter yeah i think that that's december no november to december is probably why people have so many like weight loss goals <laughs> starting in the new year because it's like like, I feel like for me, like I'm fairly disciplined throughout the year, especially this year, like I lost a, you know, decent amount of weight, but then you kind of get into the holiday season. You just kind of slowly. I discovered homemade hot chocolate this year. Yeah, that's good. Which has been so mm-hmm. good. That crock pot hot chocolate. Ooh. Yeah. That's a good one though. Yeah. Finger Thank foods. You. See your list. You were nervous about your list, but your list is. That was one of my first ideas and I was like, this is going to be a good one. Mm-hmm. Okay. So my number two, uh. Is just simply being with family, yeah. um, which I guess we kind of talked about a little bit in the last in your last one, but and just kind of the mental break from work, yeah. um, like just kind of being able just to pause thought processes on other things. This year, I don't know how it's going to be this year, just because our work situation is different than it was last year. But like last year, I was um, working for have I, I don't know if I've talked about it on here before but I used to work for Chick-fil-A and I was an area director so I helped oversee two restaurants in our city um on on our side of town mm-hmm. um you know and even when you're off of work in that environment you're still kind of on call you still get the you know the team member slack updates the right. emails the text threads of just things and it's not like I'm not saying that to complain I'm just saying it's just kind of part of the job you're right. just kind of, you just kind of always feel like you're a little bit attached to it even when you're at home right in some in some regard but christmas comes and the restaurant's closed on christmas so it kind of felt like a real day where you could just like be disconnected completely right. from work and know that you're not gonna like the restaurant's not gonna burn down because no one's there right um go ahead and knock on that one <laughs> <laughs> um and so i just always kind of liked having that mental 
break and then just being with family that you only see for us once or twice a year. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that's my number two. Yeah, that's a good one. There's just a certain sense of coziness to it. I liked, like, and this is how I kind of am on vacations too. Well, maybe not so much anymore, but I don't like napping on Christmas Day. Yes, if we're on family vacation, no naps allowed. Yeah. Johnny's like, this is family time, which is fine. Unless it's like this summer we went to but Branson, think, Silver Dollar City. So you get home and you're just like exhausted. And he's like, no, we can't nap. And you're like. <laughs> I would say like if it was a vacation with just you and I and the point of the vacation was to unplug and relax. Right. Then I'd be completely fine with naps. Right. But like for Christmas, it's like this day comes once a year. We're with family that we don't get to see super often. Right. And we're going to sleep off a portion of the day. It's like, I don't right. want to do that. You got to stay awake. Fight through it, people. Even if in misery, fight through it. <laughs> We have lots of fun. <laughs> <laughs> What's your number two? Um, did you already do your number two? Yeah, I already did. So Next. we're already did, we're already to number one. I know we're we are we've already made it. All right. Okay. You ready? Oh, number one. I don't know who that is, but it is not Santa Claus. I think it started as Santa and it slowly is divulged it's into someone It's maybe like else. the um, abominable snowman or something. What did you say? Abominable snowman? Abominable. Is that the right word? Yes. Abominable. Abominable. You always question my words. Abdominal. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, this one's a little more sentimental. Okay. Um, but I just like that Christmas is obviously an obvious season where it's easier to direct our family and our children to Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like, that's what it's about. And so it's a lot easier than like in the summer when it's like you're going swimming and it's, we still are incorporating that obviously through our virtues, but this is like every story is about uh -huh. it. Every book we're reading. Doing the Advent readings. Yeah. Advent, yeah. It's just a little more concentrated and focused. And then also with our family to stay in that theme is we every year with a group um, buy for a family. And so that's another, mm -hmm. we're able to like focus our children around. The reason is that we can um, bless people and to point them to Christ. And so, that to me is always just, yeah. it's nice that it's an easy sort of, they know what it's about. And mm -hmm. so that's where our focus, it kind of gets lasered in. Yeah. And I think we've been doing a good, good job, not to necessarily pat us on the back, but I've appreciated a lot of the things that we've done this year, both as a life group and as a, and as a family, of course, you know, like we, like we said, um, in our life group each Christmas, we, um, adopt a family. Is that the right word? Or. Yes, we're, we go through like an organization. Yeah. Yes. Um, and so, you know, we always take the kids to the shopping and I didn't go on the shopping last year, but this year, so I don't know if y'all did this last year, but I liked it how, like, cause we, we take cash with us to the Correct. store. We go through the list um, and then eat, we kind of divvy out the cash to each kid. So each kid gets the opportunity to come up and, and pay the, the guy at the restaurant who was, I thought he was awesome this year. Yeah. I mean, he was a little crazy, but the guy at the cashier, you know, he just was having fun with it too. Um, and I just think those, you know, hopefully those moments are impactful for the kids and like, and then at our kids homeschool co-op, they do a market day, mm -hmm. um, which typically is towards the end of the school year. But this year they did it in Christmas season, which I think yeah. actually worked out in terms of timing Yeah, because our kids made homemade Play-Doh and they made how much like we made 36 or something like that containers of play-doh they each picked a flavor well, how much money do they make oh each each one of our children made like 1775 like yeah. almost 18 dollars. so each kid almost so 18 dollars, and so um of course 10 percent of that goes to the church right. and then the rest we pitched the idea to them of like using that money to buy gifts for their siblings right which has been fun so um we've done so we did a Christmas date with our youngest and then Danica took our daughter out yesterday and then I'm going to mm -hmm. take my son out soon yeah. um, to like a meal and then them to one of the stores to use that their own cash to purchase a gift for their siblings. Right. Yeah. And it wasn't like we took him to five below, which yeah. everything's five dollars and below. So it wasn't except the back corner section. That's like the 
I think they call it the five and beyond section or something like that. Oh. Did you not know that? And the prices no. go up back there. Oh, I yeah. didn't know that. No, um, I ended up taking our daughter to Alaska, like four or five stores. Yeah. She had a specific thing in mind for one of her brothers. We were finally able to find it, but I had already kind of had the foresight that it was going to be too expensive, too expensive. Um, even like for something that you and I would buy. <laughs> yeah. But she just knows what he likes. Uh, but she was able to find something else. Yeah. So she maybe she spent more than our yeah. youngest. But she just, even our youngest, he, I mean, we had to direct him a few times, but he was just so excited, mm-hmm. you know, to like, I'm buying this for my bubby and sissy. And yeah. then he wrapped it and put it under the tree. And he's been trying not to tell them, but I think it's kind he's of hinted. He's not the best secret keeper. <laughs> I mean, or three. surprise keeper. Right, surprise keeper. Um, so, but that's been fun. Mm-hmm. And so this is the first year that we've actually had them do that. Um, but, you know, it's just, it's just taking those, because obviously every kid, um, you know, they can have that bent towards like, what am I getting for Christmas? And I get that. Like, it's okay to be excited for that. But when our middle son is already, I've told him time's up. He's already, he's you, already telling me what he wants on his on list his for birthday. next year. Oh yeah. For his birthday and for next and I'm like, year. Dude, and chill. It's like, like yeah. he's the one we have to like, stop it. You're not allowed to talk to me about toys, <laughs> presents, nothing <laughs> for months. We have to give him. Yes. We have to give him like a, his birthday is on St. Patrick's. So we tell him like, okay, after Valentine's day, then you can start telling me what you want for your birthday. Yeah. It still does. It. He's still, yeah. Anyways, he'll just you know, and he wants the most random stuff. Like now he's in the Muck Man, which apparently is a villain from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that he saw in like a magazine or something. Like I don't even know. Has he been in? I don't know. But he he literally is like a villain made out of trash, and he looks like a slime ball. But that's he just has his heart set on Muck Man right now. Which sorry, kid, mom already had bought you some bad guys, and yeah, Muck that Man one was not one of them. Was not too late them. to the draw on that one. I saw that one at an antique mall, but it was thirty dollars. Oh wow. Sorry. Yeah. His other Not paying thirty dollars for muck. No. <laughs> uh, but again, like that practice of trying to instill uh, appreciation for generosity in your kids, and like the opportunities to give back to someone else, and like, and that you having money, but your mindset not being, this is money for me, but right. this is money I can use to bless somebody else. Yeah. Is a is a mindset you have to teach your kids. It's not something that's going to come natural. I mean, heck, we're adults and it doesn't always come natural. Yeah. You have to really plan and think about that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Um, so we try to instill that in them. So, yeah, yeah. So there we go. So what's yours? Uh, my number one is kind of a uh, combined, but we talked about so celebrating Christ, right? Like, and we kind of talked about that, like just this whole season of like kind of. Every conversation, every topic, the music, just kind of everything, us being able to direct it back to Christ in a little bit of a clearer path, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of which, we still haven't watched The Star. Um, I know. And then <laughs> also it kind of like it, Christmas, for whatever reason, I always identify Christmas as like a mile marker for a year. Like it's kind of like it's the time where you can really stop and think about the year behind you. Yeah. And it's also when you kind of start thinking more about the year ahead. So kind of that whole transition, like I feel like Christmas is kind of the transition into the next year. Yeah. And so I always like every Christmas, I always have the thought like wondering what is life going to be like this time next year? Yeah. Like next Christmas, what is life going to be like? Well, we know we're going to have a fourth child. Whew. And like, you know, the past few years or past my whole life, I've been working at Chick-fil-A. But for the past few years, I knew that, you know, God was putting something on my heart that mm-hmm. um, would eventually caused me to leave Chick-fil-A. So like last year, I was like, I wonder if I'll still be with Chick-fil-A next Christmas or if I will have left. And you know, I've left since. So now it's like, okay, I left. And so now I'm sitting here and we're self-employed, but you know, we're still trying to figure out the nuts and bolts of, of a business and, and all that kind of stuff. And so, um, it requires a lot of faith. So now it's like, so I'm wondering like, so where are we going to be next year? You know, and it's just kind of interesting. I just always view that. And I don't know if I do that at any other season of the year except Christmas. Just always wondering, like, this time next year, I wonder what the dynamic of our of our life will be. So I always just enjoy that about about Christmas. Just the whole the whole (laughs) cold kind of (laughs) instead of whole kind of reflection um, that comes along with with the season. And, you know, like our pastor says a lot, Christmas is a magnifier for a lot of people. You know, the. Um, the good, the bad, the the hurt, the emotions, like Christmas just seems to magnify those things. And so 
you know, there is a lot of emotion that comes along with Christmas. My mom passed away five years ago. Um, six, six years ago? Six years ago. Um, and, uh, you know, and so, like, not having her at Christmas always stirs up, you know, some emotion. And mm-hmm. I know, like, you've talked about with your granny and, and same thing with my grandparents. Like, just, you know, there's kind of, like, this sense for me as a as an adult um, to, like, try to capture what I felt like Christmas was for me as a kid and then try to give that to my kids. Mm. And then sometimes you just have to come to terms that it's not going to be your experience, you yeah. know? And we had to have that conversation this year because we were, you know, with my family trying to figure out where and when and, and who could do what and that, you know, and it just kind of, and we, I felt like we were really trying to shove our experience as kids growing up with our family trying to do the best it was almost like we were trying to fit a square shape piece into a triangle just trying to make it work to be like an experience but it you know just didn't make sense for our family so um but it's everything still ended up working out in a way that i think is probably the best option and and i think it's going to still be really really fun for all of us so um yeah and we have some friends who are also having christmas a little different this year too but it's I think in the uh, looking af- back after it, it's not going to matter. Mm-hmm. You know, I think in the moment you can get caught up with, is this going to be the perfect? Is this going to yeah. be exactly what I want? And it's like, yeah, with few exception, your children just want to be with you. Mm-hmm. And I think the whom... Christmas magic is being with people that love you. Right. Um, it doesn't matter the place. It doesn't matter the amount. It's just. I can think of maybe two Christmases where it was like, because, you know, like as a kid, you do a Christmas list and I can really only think of maybe, maybe one or two Christmases where it was like, I had like that gift that I really, really wanted and I wasn't sure if I was going to get it or not. You know, like there was like, kind of like, am I, is it going to happen? But other than that, like, I don't really remember. And it was a Nintendo GameCube, which I did get, um, Way to go. So uh, that was a, that was, I mean, I just, I remember that. But other than that moment, like most of Christmas, uh, like really the memories that stick with me are just like the, the meals with family, like being in the room with everyone in the morning mm-hmm. and not really thinking about what all the gifts are people are giving. So I know that a lot of parents and I know we can too, put a lot of pressure yeah. on the, the <laughs> gifts. Um, but really I think the thing that helps the whole experience be, a memory and magical for your kids is just all being together yeah, um, as best as you can and trying to maintain a good attitude because it can be stressful. There's yes. a lot of kids who want to open all the gifts all at the same time and you're right. trying to coordinate it. And I like to draw it out as long as possible. Yes, me too. Um, and you know, so sometimes you can kind of like just sit, you know, but you just, you just sometimes have to sit back and take a breath and just realize that these, this is a memory your kid will have of this yeah. day. And so just let it be what it is. Yeah. Well, there you go. So that was our uh, top five Christmas list for our Christmas special. Yes. I hope you made it all the way through this. You know, maybe just for whatever reason. <laughs> you maybe you were just curious. Yeah. Do you have the same top five or what are yeah. things that I you I appreciated enjoyed? your list. Well, thank you. Yeah. You were... I mean, I did think about it. It just... I, I built it up a lot in, mm-hmm. in my head. It's funny the things that how sometimes you and I flip flop on who overthinks things. Yes. <laughs> um, but we, so this, this episode is out now, obviously. Yes. Um, uh, we won't have one on Christmas week, right? But then we'll have another one, um, on the following week, right? New year's, new year's. And that will be kind of like a new year's themed episode. So it'll be also a little bit of a different theme right. from our normal. And then the episode after that, we'll get back on track with our yes. normal, normal pace. Yeah. So, Appreciate you guys listening. Hope you have a merry, merry, merry Christmas. Um, Just remember, you know, the reason we do this. Um, And if you're a parent with kids, obviously, I don't know. You wouldn't be a parent of (laughs) no kids, no kids. But uh, just, you know, take a deep breath when you need to enjoy. Enjoy the season. Gosh, I can't talk. Enjoy the season, even with some of the stresses and and challenges that can come along with it. Yeah. and uh, and keep Jesus in the in the center of it all for your yes. kids. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, we wish y'all a merry Christmas, and we will see y'all next time. Bye. Oh oh oh.